Hello friends, welcome back to another video on this channel. In today's video, I will show you guys my new creation. Uh, OpenCV and Python based human detection and tracking robot car. So let me tell you guys how this works. So basically, I have my phone here. This acts as a webcam, wireless webcam for my uh, computer. My, it uses a software called DroidCam to basically wirelessly stream the uh, camera data from the phone's camera to the computer using your Wi-Fi network. Uh, then the camera processes the data using an OpenCV based program. It then uh, sees where the face is. It will detect a face and then it will actually see where the face is in the frame and see how far away it is from the center and also how big or small the face is basically how far away it is from the camera or how close it is based on that it will actually calculate where the face is and it will basically move the robot so it will send a command through serial onto an arduino the arduino then moves the robot so if it's too close for example move the robot back if it's too far it will move it closer right or left so now there are two ways to uh, complete this approach one way is to have uh, uh, the Arduino, uh, sorry, the robot be tethered to your computer. So I'm using wireless webcam. Obviously, I can move this away. Um, but for serial communication between the Arduino and the uh, computer, we'll obviously need a USB cable. So that is one option where you, which you can do. However, that limits the rest mobility of the robot. So what I have decided to do is actually use an nrf based approach so what i'm doing is as you can see i have this microcontroller here now by the way this is an arduino mega but you do not at all need to use a mega an arduino uno or a nano is perfectly fine for this application all this is doing is taking serial data using this nrf chip here and uh, sending data to this uh, micro uh, this uh, motor controller which is then driving two uh, dc geared motors as you can see down here which then drive the wheels so you can perfectly uh, use a Arduino Nano or a Uno. Uh, the only reason I am using the Arduino Mega is actually because I do not have another Arduino Uno or Nano on hand. My other uh, my Arduino Unos and the Nanos are uh, in other projects currently. So uh, the only free microcontrollers I have are the Arduino Megas. So yeah, that's why. Um, also, if you recognize this chassis, you would know this is actually from one of my previous videos. Uh, the self-driving car uh, gps best safe driving car so if you guys want to see that video uh, there will be a, leave a uh, link down in the description you can also check it out through the channel pages uh, so yeah basically the way this is working instead is i have a second arduino this here now this again if some of you guys might recognize this exact build from my rc model aircraft actually well as it turns out uh this um has the exactly what i need for this project as well just do not mind the joysticks or the potentiometer or anything all i'm using is the nrf chip connected to the arduino here this is here an arduino uno as you guys can see so basically all this does is i have connected this to the computer using an usb cable the computer sends serial data to this arduino uno which receives it it reads it and then it will transmit it via the nrf module to the arduino mega and then it can control it so basically i'm getting around connecting it directly by using a us uh, uh, nrf in approach now a second way to do the same approach would be to actually have uh, your entire processing on board on the on uh, the robot it can be done in two ways first is by maybe using like a laptop or something like that building a bigger robot and having the laptop on there connect the arduino directly using usb Option number two is using something like a Raspberry Pi. However, obviously we all know uh, that Raspberry Pis are not only are they really expensive, uh, they're not supposed to be expensive, but they are. And more importantly, even if you wanted to buy one, it's basically out of stock everywhere. So this is kind of your only option for building a wireless robot like this one. Uh, so let me tell you guys a bit about the wiring. So obviously this is a quite simple wiring. Uh, let me just turn on this. Uh, there you go. So for connecting the uh, motor controller we are using pins 2 to 4 2 3 4 uh, 5 sorry 2 to 5 and then 7 and 8 are ce and csn pins respectively or for the uh, the uh, nrf module uh, i have found in my testing that 7 and 8 pins prove to be most reliable the rest pins you can use any pin in fact but it proves more reliable most reliable to be on pin 7 and 8 so those are the pins that i am using uh, other than that for SPI it's just standard SPI connections on the Arduino Mega you can just use any Arduino Mega pinout 
uh, or any other pin not really it is same on in the pins are same on the arduino uno and the arduino nano but it's a bit different on the mega so just check your pin out on the one you are using and based on that you can uh, just simply use the uh, pin out and connect the um, nrf modules on the uh, transmitter side of things uh, yeah, you do not need to do any of this all you need is an arduino uh, any arduino really and an uh, nrf module just connect them 7 and 8 as c and csn respectively as well again most reliable and your spi outputs you do not at all need any of this this is just because i am too lazy to remove this so i decided to just simply reuse the uh, entire thing rather than um, removing the arduinos and the nrfs and then rewiring and stuff so yeah that's basically it for physically this uh, wiring this robot and stuff so i'll quickly switch over to the computer and show you guys the code now okay so as you can see now i have switched over to the computer this is the python program running uh, so let me start with the libraries first so the, for this uh, we are using just two libraries uh, basically these two libraries numpy and sys you will find on your if you don't just install numpy sometimes it doesn't come included in your id uh, i'm using pycharm here so it does come included as mine uh, other than that you need two more libraries serial library which is uh, actually called pi serial so i had a few comments in one of my previous videos it's actually called pi serial not serial so install this library and you'll need OpenCV Python for your face recognition part, obviously. Uh, this is for communicating with your uh, controller on serial port. Now, this is something you might need to change. So, this is your COM port. This changes based on which port your Arduino is connected to. So, in my case, I found that it was connected to COM6. You can just check it using Device Manager. So, go into Device Manager. And uh, over here in port and com, you'll see your uh, microcontroller show up. So I do not have any connected, so it's not showing up. But you'll see here it will write the com port. Just take that and put it right here uh, on this part here. Just change that, make it whatever com port it is for you. Other than that, this is and you don't really have to change much. Uh, but I'll quickly explain this. So for directions, the way we're working is by sending an integer, actually. Uh, these integers have come from your numpad on your standard uh, numpad on the keyboard not on your phones but on the keyboard if you see your numpad uh, it will actually be like the same so if you look uh, the forward mo uh, would be eight, number 8 so that's what it is uh, forward right forward left uh, the middle most is the number 5 so it's taste so basically that's where these numbers have come from uh, here we are just said this is the command to send the direction onto the uh, serial We're writing in bytes because uh, in unicode string is not really work uh, does not work very well with the modern pi serial libraries so instead we are using bytes here i will convert it later on to serial i'll show you guys that in the arduino part so this is where you are just computing it so we are setting the center as 320 240 uh, this is in x and y coordinates um, so this is basically based on like your pixelation of the screen so the number of pixels and where it is so basically if we are calculating where the foot uh, your of the screen uh, person is if where like how big they are how small they are respective and stuff like that and based on that we will then move the robot uh, to the point to center the object uh, center the uh, ro person uh, in the screen to make sure they stay in the frame uh, after that over here we are just set return out out is the integer as you can see these are the respective integers so we'll return the out and then we we'll print the direction this is the part where we see the frame so we are converting first into grayscale and then we are just scaling it down uh, to basically save one fps because obviously you need a very very high power computer for scaling something like a 4k image or something like that but uh, we are just scaling it down so to make it more uh, run like like uh, bet better uh, higher fps and stuff other than that these are just your uh, seeing how maximum number of faces and where they are calculating where the faces uh, exactly uh, if there is no face detected you are just going to send direction 5 and say searching uh, this is for you seeing the frame just the uh, like just seeing the uh, picture for visualization purposes uh, this is something might need to change your video capture uh, this is the like the camera so if you have more than one cameras you might need to change this value uh, it starts from zero so if you do not have any cameras uh, only one is there for example 
and then you might need to change this to zero so i have an integrated webcam uh, for my computer and uh, the phone obviously droid cam is going to be number second so that's why mine is number one if you understand what i just said uh, yeah that's basically it and then once you end it we are just saying to destroy all the windows to basically save one space and clean up the uh, thing after you are done so that's basically it uh, for the python part uh, if you guys do not want to use nrf by the way i will leave the links uh, for two separate codes uh, in the description one with nrf and one which is connected directly using serial so you guys can check that out down in the description i'll explain the nrf code for now but uh, the it will be quite similar actually so you can understand it quite well as well as long as you understand this one so this is your transmitter this is the one which is connected to your computer uh, this in my case is the arduino uno if you might remember uh, so basically same thing you are using spi and your rf library for communicating with the nrf uh, you don't really need to change any of this here just you might want to change this although i do not recommend it you, it might vary on your experience some other pins might be more suitable for you next we are just creating an array of, uh, named data uh, as an integer because as you remember we are sending integer data then we are just beginning serial uh, we are beginning a radio we are setting the writing pipe the, we are setting it to maximum communication range so it's it uh, 250 kbps and maximum for the uh, nrf level and we are just saying to stop listening because this is a transmitter and then we are setting the channel so this is 2.4 gigahertz plus so this is 2.524 i believe it will go this one will be uh, this is the maximum supported on the nrf uh, i found this works best because actually there are pretty much no devices using this exact channel so very little interference which works great for us uh, so yeah other than that this is basically if serial is available that is if the python program is sending data then we'll read the data set it to data zero uh, which is the first uh, first and the only one if you remember we have set it to only one uh, one uh, like there will be only one object in this array and then we are just going to write the data and the size of data which will be one in this case next we are going to fire up the receiver code this will be going on to your uh, main board which in my case was the arduino mega which will go on the rover so obviously these are the same things for the uh, over here until here we have the same for uh, like the receiver uh, this is something for your motor controller as i said to three and four and five for your motor pins uh, we are setting up the serial beginning the serial radio same thing here we are just setting all the nrf stuff up setting the uh, motor pins as output then if you are saying if radio is available this time as that needs serial this needs the radio to communicate we do not want the rover to be moving roguely so we are just saying if and only if radio is available then we start moving then we are saying read the data and then we are setting the integer direction as the data so this is basically just setting your uh, the serial read which we read integer from python we sent it to the arduino and this is coming now to as integer direction same thing then we are just saying process direction which we have set as void process direction as to be having nine cases obviously as the nine different buttons uh, nine different uh, like yeah basically buttons on your keyboard same thing so we are just saying if it is one back left back right left whatever you know respectively on your uh, according to your numpad and then over here we are just setting the different void uh, movements so calling for the different movements so forward back right left forward left forward back uh, back left back right and stop so that's basically it i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel and yeah i'll see you guys on the next video thank you